Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Learn at Cloud Analytics. So I have uh, received a lot of queries from most of you asking about what are the tools that are currently used in a real-time project. So let it be being a data analyst or a Power BI developer or a Tableau developer. What are the different tools that we usually use in a day-to-day real-time project? So this video would help you to understand along with the a tool that is specific to your core technology what are the different tools that you should also be familiar with so without any delay let's get into the discussion part so in a real-time project so assuming that if you are working as a power bi developer or as a tableau developer it's not just that you would be uh, allocated with just using with that particular raw desktop tools that is a power bi desktop tool or a tableau developer tool but rather along with this particular raw bi tool you would also be needed to work on other parallel tools that is needed for your project to keep up and running so among those different tools the first tool that we are going to cover here is microsoft excel yes so why is a uh, microsoft excel needed uh, even though you're working with a specific advanced bi tool like a power bi desktop or a tableau desktop tools it's because though the tradition has been moved from the microsoft excel era to the uh, latest bi era it's still that most of the projects are still using excel for the data validations so whatever uh, reports that you might have developed using either of the tools, right? So you would still need to go back with the Microsoft Excel to make the relevant validations to ensure that the right data has been captured in your respective uh, Tableau or the Power BI reports. So having a good understanding or a good knowledge on Microsoft Excel would help you to perform such data validations. So here particularly you can uh, try to understand how you can just uh, validate the data like probably if your data is coming in from two different data sets right and if you need to validate if there are any duplicate records or how many records are there within a uh, within a specific column or within that entire table to uh, verify the count of the records in those tables or if you need to uh, use a function called vlookup right this is this is uh, particularly important when you do a data validations where if you need to bring in the data from a different data set to the existing uh, data set then you might need to use the function called vlookup functionality and then lastly you might also need to understand how you can use the power, uh, pivot table within microsoft excel in order to perform your validations so helping you to understand these minimal uh, basics of excel would help you to get started with the real-time project so followed by sql so sql is also uh, tremendously important particularly if you are uh, if you're working as a data analyst because uh, you would need to query the data set from the uh, corresponding uh, data source uh, let it be a microsoft sql server or an oracle data uh, database whichever the database or the data source that you are need to connect it to you might need to perform certain transactions or like uh, transformations within your sql database and probably you might need to query what has been existing within that corresponding tables and understand the data structure in there and probably if you are the only developer and if you are the only person who has to handle the end-to-end -end, uh, implementation of the project like uh, getting the raw data from your organization and transforming that into a proper table uh, format using the corresponding uh, SQL database and uh, performing all sort of transformations that are needed for that particular data and then uh, optimizing it for the performance part. And then you might also need to use that uh, transform data to connect within your corresponding BI tool. So there you would need to use the SQL uh, pretty much so probably you would need to understand how you perform the uh, or how do you create a table and insert the records within a table and how do you query the records within the given table and if there are any needs to perform any transformations then how do you do those transformations on top of your data and how do you verify if there are any uh, uh, duplicate records from the 
uh, tables that you might have uh, created or probably if there are already existing tables and how do you validate the two uh, tables content or the different data sets that you might have. So there are like a different operations. So probably you would need to understand what level of expertise is needed with respect to your current job role. So it would differ from a uh, person responsibility to res uh, to the other person's responsibility, right? So accordingly, you might need to, to uh, enhance your skill set with SQL coding from a beginner to an advanced level. So then comes Python or R as well. So most of the organizations, uh, if you're particularly working as a data analyst, uh, most of the organizations today are currently using Python for their uh, most of the data cleansing and transformations part, and also for the predictive analytics, uh, like for machine learning or uh, data science related projects. So most of the organizations have been uh, moved to Python. So you might need to have a good understanding of uh, Python use, like uh, how do you write a code in Python and what are the constructors and how do you uh, make use of the OOPS uh, concepts within Python. And uh, probably if that is related to a data science project or um, ML projects, you might also need to understand how do you perform the different transactions using a Python programming language like uh, data cleansing, transformations, and also understanding the different libraries that is needed for your project like NumPy, Pandas, or Scikit-Py, so Matplotlib. So there are different libraries as well. So depending on the scope of the project and the need for that particular uh, libraries or the topic, you might need to understand that and uh, uh, learn that particular uh, skill set. So likewise, we also have R. So R has been used uh, previously before Python had a uh, taking up its place, but uh, there are still a couple of companies who are still uh, using this R as their, uh, uh, for all these uh, sort of transactions, uh, which has uh, been performed using a Python. So probably either of this, having a good understanding of either of these two programming languages would help you to uh, ease with your uh, project in a real time. And then comes with the BI tools. So whether it's a Power BI or a Tableau, however it is, you might need to understand the tool functionality thoroughly from end to end and also how you can bring in the most out of the given data. So that is where it is expected that you being as a Power BI developer or as a data analyst, what is the data is all about that you've been connected to and what insights can you be able to draw out of it to help the business to make a better decision out of the data. So this could be uh, varied from a project to project. Like if you're working on an advanced uh, analytics project, then probably you might need to go with the predictive analytics use cases as well. So probably, uh, and that is why uh, I'm saying that uh, you should be aware of each and every topic or each and every uh, features that is part of Microsoft Power BI tool. And then comes uh, Tableau. So Tableau is also similar to Power BI. So where uh, it's mainly used for your raw reporting purposes, like for building your raw data visualization reports within uh, with respect to the data that you've connected to. And uh, that would help the business to gain some uh, or draw some key insights out of the connected data. So now, uh, now that we've seen all the technical tools that is needed for your project part, right? There are also other tools that is also quite uh, important for you to get familiarized with. And these tools are, just, are especially important because if you are someone who is new and uh, or probably who is just a fresher, who is just out of college and who would need to work on a real time project, right? And this is most likely that you are not familiar with any of the tools that I might just cover in a couple of seconds now. So please do understand that uh, when you go into a real time project, please don't get confused or uh, please don't be in a dilemma like uh, how would I cope up with understanding with this particular tools. But uh, when you work on that, I, it would eventually take um, uh, probably a little time and effort from your end, but uh, definitely it would help you to gain that uh, expertise in a given certain time of period. So the first functional tool that I'd be talking about here is the Skype for Business, yes. So Skype for Business is predominantly used for uh, uh, within the intranet, that within an organization to communicate uh, from one business person to another person or uh, like within your 
organization or within your project if you need to conversate quickly with your colleague or within your teammate right so you usually use the skype uh, to have a quick conversation and you also um, create a meeting invite using a skype invite so you would also need to get familiarized with the skype meetings and how do you schedule a meeting and uh, how do you uh, conversate effectively using the chat and everything and then comes the outlook so uh, for every uh, communication we would use the outlook for the email uh, communications so let, let let it be with the business or with your colleagues in the project or with your management right you often use this outlook as a medium to write and uh, communicate your intentions on that particular topic and share that over an email a well-drafted email using an outlook so you might also need to understand the basics of how do you effectively use an outlook for uh, uh, sending out your uh, emails in a better and also in a professional manner so please do uh, focus on your communication skills as well like how do you draft an effective communication uh, email with respect to your uh, colleague or with respect to the higher management and depending on the person that you might need to interact with and then comes with the teams so teams has been also been uh, introduced or included in the in the real time projects like you know day to day uh, project right usually most of the organizations have uh, moved to teams as well so teams is also similar to that of your skype but uh, unlike to skype teams has got additional features and functionalities that would help you to easily collaborate within your organization to other members of the team and other members of the project and then we have another tool called Jira. So Jira is basically used or helpful for the project management where uh, uh, if there needs to be uh, discussed about the work, how it has to be allocated and who is working on which particular work item and the task status to look at, right? We usually use the Jira where uh, the scrum master or probably the team leader, whoever is responsible in managing this Jira, uh, Jira board, they would actually uh, allocate that particular work item to the respective member in the project. And they also have uh, a regular uh, or a daily stand-up calls for a 15-minute uh, duration where every person in the project is supposed to give an update on that particular assigned task on where the particular status of that particular task and if there are any blockers uh, with respect to that current uh, work that has been delegated. Okay, so having uh, an understanding of how Jira would work and what are the, so probably you might need not uh, look into at a depth, in-depth uh, level of Jira functionalities, but rather you just need to understand like, okay, this tool would might also be used in your project. So it'll be good to know that uh, before you even go with the project. And then we have an Azure DevOps board. So if you are working on a cloud-based project, right? So usually you might use this Azure DevOps for your uh, uh, work uh, topics, like uh, similar to that of your Jira board that I mentioned earlier. Azure DevOps board is also similar to that of uh, Jira, where the track of your work items have been tracked and it's been assigned and delegated to the required uh, team member in the particular project. Okay, so there could be, uh, there are other ways of how you can util uh, utilize this particular Azure DevOps uh, tool, but uh, for you, uh, for the scope of this particular requirement, it is just confined to use that as a work delegation part. And then we also have similar to that, like a Kanban board. So Kanban board is also like, a, so, um, it's, so all these tools, whichever I'm talking about, the Jira or the Azure DevOps or the Kanban board, these are all something like a drag and drop kind of a tools where uh, you would have usually a board and uh, where you would have different columns or different sections of that particular board uh, based on the project status or based on the work status, like uh, uh, doing or in progress or uh, in backlog or in progress and uh, uh, blockers or waiting for others so something like this and then you also have a done state so there are different states being configured and that could be customized as per your project requirement and you just need to drag and drop and create certain tasks within that particular uh, 
work item that has been allocated to you to mention like what is the current state of that particular delegated work to ensure that there is a clear transparency and visibility within the whole project and whoever would like to just uh, get to know like the state of that particular uh, uh, work item they can quickly log into the jira or devops board or the kanban board and look at the task status so this is an efficient and quicker way of work delegation within a project and then we also have the gitlab so gitlab is also primarily used for uh, so gitlab has been recently been um, uh, popular like it's been uh, picked up by most of the organizations recently where uh, it's just a one to go tool and uh, you can just have and uh, uh, utilize most of the functionalities in by just using this single tool itself so here you can just use it for an azure uh, like a like a devops uh, kind of a ci cd process or in this particular scope of our discussion gitlab can also be used for documentation purpose and also for the um, business work items uh, state of uh, status so either ways for this particular scope of discussion gitlab can be used for uh, documenting your business or your project related information and it can also be used to track the state of the work items that have been delegated to you and then we also have the confluence so confluence is also a documentation part where uh, for the corresponding project there would need to be a documentation uh, to be created for every project and that would be uh, captured or that would be created by the respective developers or whoever the content owners of that particular topic they have to go to this confluence page and uh, create those uh, documentation on the web so this is much more comfortable than the traditional uh, microsoft word document because there you might need to work on a lot of formatting options but your confluence is just simple as like uh, how you write it in your uh, a notebook or in a book so it's very straightforward and you also have a lot of functionalities being included over there so um, the use of uh, writing and using this particular tool is quite effective and helpful and then we also have the traditional law documentation part which is the microsoft word and then we also have the microsoft powerpoint where um, you might often need to uh, create powerpoint presentations to uh, present your uh, project in front of the management or in front of the project team to ensure that what your project is all about and uh, if there are any uh, if that is a new project then probably it could be used for the project requirement uh, session or if it's a completed project you might need to give up a uh, uh, the project updates during that particular presentation so however the scope of the requirement is you might need to have a good knowledge of or uh, a good experience in creating effective powerpoint presentations so these are the different uh, functional and technical tools that would be needed for you to work in a real time project so i hope you understood this uh, like uh, this topic has been clarified to most of you and uh, if you find this video useful please do like share and subscribe and do not forget to hit on the notification icon thank you